the dramatic, the cruelest, savage exhibition of nature at her worst without, and we three. We elegant three within. I should like to think that an irate Jehovah was pointing those arrows of lightning directly at my head, the unbowed head of George Gordon, Lord Byron, England's greatest sinner. But I cannot flatter myself to that extent. Possibly those thunders of our dear Shelley. Heaven's applause for England's greatest poet. What of my Mary? She is an angel. You think so? You hear? Come, Mary. Come and watch the storm. You know how lightning alarms me. Shelley, darling, will you please light these candles for me? <laughs> oh, Mary, darling. Astonishing creature. I, Lord Byron. Frightened of thunder, fearful of the dark. And yet you have written a tale that sent my blood into icy creeps. <laughs> Look at her, Shelley. Can you believe that bland and lovely brow conceived of Frankenstein? A monster created from cadavers out of rifled graves? Isn't it astonishing? I don't know why you should think so. What do you expect? Such an audience needs something stronger than a pretty little love story. So why shouldn't I write of monsters? No wonder Murray's refused to publish the book. He says his reading public would be too shocked. It will be published, I think. Then, darling, you will have much to answer for. The publishers did not see that my purpose was to write a moral lesson of the punishment that befell a mortal man who dared to emulate God. Well, whatever your purpose may have been, my dear, I take great relish in savoring each separate horror. I roll them over on my tongue. Don't, Lord Byron. Don't remind me of it tonight. What a sitting in that churchyard to begin with. The sobbing women. <laughs> The first cloud of earth on the coffin. That was a pretty chill. Frankenstein and the dwarf stealing the body out of its new-made grave. Cutting the hanged man down from the gallows where he swung creaking in the wind. The cunning of Frankenstein in his mountain laboratory. Taking dead men apart and building up a human monster. So fearful, so horrible, that only a half-crazed brain could have devised. And then the murder. <laughs> the little child drowned. Henry Frankenstein himself thrown from the top of the burning mill by the very monster he had created. And it was these fragile white fingers that penned the nightmare. Oh, you made me prick myself, Byron. She's bleeding. There, there. I do think it a shame, Mary, to end your story quite so suddenly. That wasn't the end at all. Would you like to hear what happened after that? I feel like telling you. It's a perfect night for mystery and horror. The air itself is filled with monsters. I'm all ears. While heaven blasts the night without, open up your pits of hell. Well then, imagine yourself standing by the wreckage of the mill. The fire is dying down. Soon the bare skeletons of the building will be visible. The gaunt rafters against the sky. and poor Mr. Henry being brought home to die. I'm glad to see the monster roasted to death before my very eyes. It's too good for him. It's all the devil's work. And you better cross yourself quick, Mother, before he gets you. Come along, come along. It's all over. Get back to your homes. Go to sleep. Woo! There it goes again. It ain't burned out at all. There's more yet. Isn't the monster dead yet? It's high time every decent man and wife was in bed. It is inside, of course, at last. Insides is always the last to be consumed. Go on. You've had enough excitement for one night. This strange man you call a monster is dead. Monster indeed. You may thank your lucky stars. They sent for me to safeguard life and property. 
Why didn't you safeguard those what lies drowned and murdered? Come now. We want no rioting, no riots. Who's rioting? Move on, move on. Good night all, and pleasant dreams. Ah, pleasant dreams yourself. Thinks he's everybody just because he's a burgomaster. <laughs> Poor Mr. Henry. He was to have been married today to that lovely girl, Elizabeth. Cover him up. Someone <laughs> must break the news to the poor girl. Ride as fast as you can to the castle and tell the old Baron Frankenstein we are bringing his son home. Oh, dear. Oh, shut up. Come home, Hans. The monster is dead now. Nothing could be left alive in that furnace. Why do you stay here? I want to see with my own eyes. Oh, Hans, he must be dead. And dead or alive, nothing can bring our little Maria back to us. I can see his blackened bones. I can sleep at night. Come back, Hans! You will be burned yourself. Maria drowned to death and you burned up. What should I do then? Lady, how can we tell you? Bring him in. skeleton at all. It lived right through the fire. Ah, oh, go bite your tongue off. We don't believe in ghosts. Nobody believed me. All right. I'll wash my hands of it. Let them all be murdered in the beds for all of me. Speak again. 
I was foretold of this. I was told to wear my wedding night. You'll soon be better, Henry. I feel almost myself again. As soon as you're strong enough, we'll go away and forget all this horrible experience. Forget? If only I could forget. But it's never out of my mind. I've been cursed for delving into the mysteries of life. Perhaps death is sacred. And I've profaned it. Oh, what a wonderful vision it was. I dreamed of being the first to give to the world the secret that God is so jealous of. The formula for life. Think of the power to create a man. And I did. I did it. I created a man. And who knows, in time, I could have trained him to do my will. I could have bred a race. I might even have found the secret of eternal life. Henry, don't say those things. Don't think them. It's blasphemous and wicked. We are not meant to know those things. It may be that I'm intended to know the secret of life. It may be part of the divine plan. No, no. It's the devil that prompts you. It's death, not life, that is in it all and at the end of it all. Listen, Henry, while you've been lying here tossing in your delirium, I couldn't sleep. And when you rave of your insane desire to create living men from the dust of the dead, a strange apparition has seemed to appear in the room. It comes a figure like death, and each time it comes more clearly, nearer. It seems to be reaching out for you, as if it would take you away from me. There it is. Look. There. I see nothing, Elizabeth. Where? There's nothing. Uh... There. There! It's coming for you! Nearer! Henry! 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 <laughs> Alfred! Drop the man! He's never here when he's wanted! What's the good of stuck foot then, anyway? Let me in, my good woman. I know the young Baron Frankenstein is at home. He's sick. He's in his bed, where all decent folks would be at this time of night. Tell him that Dr. Pretorius is here on a secret matter of grave importance and must see him alone tonight. Dr. Pretorius? Pretorius? <laughs> What, what, what was it? What was the name? Dr. Pretorius. There's no such name. Now you stay there. Who's there? It's Minnie, my lady. Oh, come in. Dr. Pretorius. He says he wants to see the master. Most insistent. Pretorius? He's a very queer-looking old gentleman, sir. And must see you on a secret grave matter, he said. Tonight, alone. Bring him in. Henry, who is this man? Dr. Pretorius. Baron Frankenstein now, I believe. Won't you come in, Doctor? 
I trust you will pardon this intrusion at so late an hour. I would not have ventured to come had I not a communication to make which I suspect may be of the utmost importance to yourself. This is Professor Pretorius. He used to be Doctor of Philosophy at the University. But, uh... But was booted out. Booted, my dear Baron, is the word, for knowing too much. Henry's been very ill, Professor. He shouldn't be disturbed. I am also a doctor, Baroness. Why have you come here tonight? My business with you, Baron, is private. Elizabeth, please. I do hope you won't upset Henry. What do you want? We must work together. Never. This is outrageous. I'm through with it. I'll have no more of this hell spawn. As soon as I'm well, I'm to be married. And I'm going away. I must beg you to reconsider. You know, do you not, that it is you, really, who are responsible for all those murders? There are penalties to pay for killing people. And with your creature still at large in the countryside. Are you threatening me? Don't put it so crudely. I had ventured to hope that you and I together, no longer as master and pupil, but as fellow scientists, might probe the mysteries of life and death. Never. No further. And reach a goal undreamed of by science. I can't make any further experiments. I, I've had a terrible lesson. That is sad. Very sad. But you and I have gone too far to stop, nor can it be stopped so easily. I also have continued with my experiments. That is why I am here tonight. You must see my creation. Have you also succeeded in bringing life to the dead? If you, Herr Baron, will do me the honor of visiting my humble abode, I think you will be interested in what I have to show you. After 20 years of secret scientific research and countless failures, I also have created life, as we say, in God's own image. I must know. When can I see it? I thought you might change your mind. Why not tonight? It is not very late. Is it far? No, but you will need a coat. Down, Herr Baron. Before I show you the results of my trifling experiments, I would like to drink to our partnership. Do you like gin? It is my only weakness. To a new world of gods and monsters. <laughs> The creation of life is enthralling. Distinctly enthralling, is it not? I cannot account precisely for all that I am going to show you. But perhaps now that you are my partner, you can. My experiments did not turn out quite like yours, Henry. But science, like love, has her little surprises, as you shall see. Good heavens, Doctor. What are these? There is a pleasing variety about my exhibits. My first experiment was so lovely that we made her a queen. Charming, don't you think? 
Then, of course, we had to have a king. Now, he's so madly in love with her that we have to segregate them. Now, now. I have to be very careful with the king. Now, behave. My next production looked so disapprovingly at the other two that they made him an archbishop. He seems to be asleep. I must wake him up. As the next one is the very devil. Very bizarre, this little chap. There's a certain resemblance to me, don't you think? Or do I flatter myself? I took a great deal of pains with him. Sometimes I have wondered whether life wouldn't be much more amusing if we were all devils and no nonsense about angels and being good. Oh, there's the king out again. Even royal amours are a nuisance. Poor Archbishop. He has his hands full. There. That'll keep you quiet. My little ballerina is charming, but such a bore. She won't dance to anything but Mendelssohn's spring song, and it gets so monotonous. My next is very conventional, I'm afraid, but you can never tell how these things will turn out. It was an experiment with seaweed. Normal size has been my difficulty. You did achieve size. I need to work that out with you. But this isn't science. It's more like black magic. You think I'm mad? Perhaps I am. But listen, Henry Frankenstein, while you were digging in your graves, piecing together dead tissues, I, my dear pupil, went for my material to the source of life. I grew my creatures, like cultures. Grew them as nature does, from seed. But still, you did achieve results that I have missed. Now think, what a world-astounding collaboration we should be. You and I, together. No. No, no, no. Leave the charnel house and follow the lead of nature. Or of God, if you like your Bible stories. Male and female created he them. Be fruitful and multiply. Create a race, a man-made race upon the face of the earth. Why not? I daren't. I daren't even think of such a thing. Our mad dream is only half realized. Alone, you have created a man. Now, together, we will create his mate. You mean... Yes, a woman. That should be really interesting. Run 
gentlemen, it's quick. It's the monster. Tell the Burgomaster. him, my good woman. A good job, too. Mind he don't get loose again, and he might do some damage and hurt somebody. Bring him down when you found him. You want any help there? I'll bind him.
escaped lunatic, merely wanted someone to handle it, that's all. Quite harmless. <laughs> We'd better get away from these parts. It isn't safe. Why? I'm frightened. The monster. Ah, there's no danger. He's safe in jail and they'll keep him there. Where's the pepper and salt? We got no pepper and salt. All right, Mother. I'll get it. Don't worry. You shall have your meat. Ah. Who's there? Who is it? You're welcome, my friend, whoever you are. Uh, 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 uh. Who are you? I think you're a stranger to me. I cannot see you. I cannot see anything. You must please excuse me, but I'm blind. Uh, uh. Come in, my poor friend. No one will hurt you here. Oh. If you're in trouble, perhaps I can help you. But you need not tell me about it if you don't want to. 
What's the matter? Ah. You're hurt, my poor friend. Come. Sit down. Now tell me, who are you? I don't understand. Can you not speak? It's strange. Perhaps, perhaps you're afflicted too. I cannot see and you cannot speak. Is that it? If you understand what I'm saying, put your hand on my shoulder. That is good. No, you stay here. I'll get you some food. shall be friends. I have prayed many times for God to send me a friend. <sighs> it's very lonely here, and it's been a long time since any human being came into this hut. I shall look after you, and you will comfort me. Now you must lie down and go to sleep. Yes, yes. Now you must sleep. Our Father, I thank thee that in thy great mercy Thou hast taken pity on my great loneliness, and now, out of the silence of the night, hast brought two of thy lonely children together and sent me a friend to be a light to mine eyes and a comfort in time of trouble. Amen. Remember, this is bread. Bread. Mm. Bread. <laughs> and this is wine. To drink. 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 <laughs> Good. Good. We are friends, you and I. Friends. <laughs> Good. Good. And now for a smoke. <laughs> no, no. This is good. Smoke. You try. Smoke. <laughs> Good, good. Good. Before you came, I was all alone. It is bad to be alone. Alone. Bad. Friend. Good. Friend. Good. <laughs> now come here. And what is this? This is wood for the fire. Wood. 
And this is fire. No, no. Fire is good. Fire, no good. No. There is good, and there is bad. Good, bad. Good. Music. Can you tell us how to get out of this wood? We've lost our way. Come in, friends, and rest a while. Look, it's the monster. What are you doing? This is my friend. Friend? This is the fiend that's been murdering half the countryside. Good heavens, man, can't you see? Oh, he's blind. He isn't human. Frankenstein made him out of dead bodies. I can smell the ghosts already. I never could stand, Grave. Shut up and follow me. Read the inscription. What does it say? Died 1899. Madalena Ernestine, beloved daughter of... Oh, never mind that. How old was she? Age 19 years, three months. Oh, that's the one. Get to work. What are you waiting for? Mercy on us.
You want me to send you to the gallows where you belong? Could be no worse than this. Well, are you ready? Yes. Well, here goes. little thing in her way, wasn't she? I hope her bones are firm. It seems lighter now. Yes. Well, Doctor, I guess that's all for tonight. Can we go home now? Yes. I shall wait here for a bit. I rather like this place. Be careful no one sees you leave. All right, we know. And leave me that lantern down there. All right, all right. Will you let me? Is this much more like this? What you say, pal? We give ourselves up and let them hang us. That goes for me, too. This is no life for murderers. <laughs> I was alone. Good evening, Smog. Friend. Yes, I hope so. Have a cigar. They are my only weakness. to the argument, if necessary. Do you know who Henry Frankenstein is and who you are? Yes, I know. Made me from dead. I love dead. Hate living. You're wise in your generation. We must have a long talk, and then I have an important call to make. Victorious is here again, sir. There. I knew it. Send him away. I won't see him. I certainly will. Good evening, Henry. Baroness, I've not yet had the opportunity of offering you my congratulations on your marriage. Pray accept them now. Dr. Pretorius, I don't know what your business is with my husband. But whatever it may be, I tell you frankly that I am not frightened of it or of you. Henry's been very ill. He's in no state to be alarmed or annoyed. Your visit now is most unwelcome. Henry, I heard the carriage drive up. I'll see that the baggage is put in. Then we're leaving. I think you know why I am here, Henry. All the necessary preparations are made. My part in the experiment is complete. I have created by my method a perfect human brain, already living 
but dormant. Everything is now ready for you and me to begin our supreme collaboration. No, no. Don't tell me of it. I don't want to hear. I've changed my mind. I won't do it. I expected this. I thought we might need another assistant. Perhaps he can persuade you. Nothing can persuade me. We shall see. No, not that. Oh, he's quite harmless. Except when crossed. Frankenstein. Yes, uh, there have been developments since he came to me. Sit down. What do you want? You no. This is your work? Yes. I'll have no hand in such a monstrous thing. Yes, must. Get him out. I won't even discuss it until he's gone. Go now. Go! Must do it. Never. Nothing can make me go on with it. I'll be out in a moment. Go and tell the master to hurry, Minnie, or we shall lose the train. Excuse me for being so nervous, my lady, but I don't like leaving you alone. Oh, nonsense, Minnie. I shall be all right. I hope so, my lady. Is that you, Henry? I charge you, as you value your mistress's life, to do nothing and say nothing of this episode. I assure you that the Baroness will be safely returned if you will leave everything to me. Nothing, that is, except what he demands. Trace Elizabeth. Oh, I admit I'm beaten. But if you can bring her back, I'll do anything that you want. Are you ready to complete with me this final experiment? What about Elizabeth? She is well and will be safely returned if you will proceed. I'm ready. Ah. It 
is interesting to think, Henry, that once upon a time we should have been burnt at the stake as wizards for this experiment. Doctor, I think the heart is beating. Look, it's beating. But the rhythm of the beat is uneven. Increase the saline solution. Is there any life yet? No, not life itself yet. This is only the simulacrum of life. This action only responds when the current is applied. We must be patient. The human heart is more complex than any other part of the body. Look, the beat is increasing. Yes. It stopped. Shall I increase the current? This heart is useless. I must have another. And it must be sound and young. Carl. You must go to your friend at the accident hospital. What we need is a female victim of sudden death. Can you do it? You promised me a thousand crowns. It will be well worth it. And the Baron will pay. Yes, yes. Go and get it. I'll try. There are always accidental deaths occurring. Always. I'll get her out of the blood. I'll go into that room. I'll go into that room and I'll take my knife out. I'll get her. I'll hold her down and there she'll be. Where are I off to? Where are she? It's beating perfectly, just as in life. Oh, if only I can keep it going until... It was a very fresh one. Where did you get it? I gave the gendarme 50 crowns. What gendarme? It was a... police case. Yes, uh, very sad, only we can't bother about that now. Can I do anything? No, no, no! I can work better alone. Ah. Work. Where's Elizabeth? Have you brought her? She wait. I wait. I'm exhausted. I must get sleep. Work. Finish. Then sleep. I can't work like this. He must go away. Send him away. I'll settle him for a little while. Drink. is alive and she is well. I don't believe you. I have proof. Proof? In a few moments from now, she will speak to you from where she is through this electrical machine. Where is she? Not far from here. Speak and she will hear you and answer. Yes. Yes, this is Henry. Henry, yes, I'm safe. But oh, Henry, how long? Come for me. Elizabeth? Elizabeth! She's gone. That is all now. But you heard her. Yes. She's alive. As soon as our work is completed, she will be returned to you. The heart is beating more regularly now. Yes, it's been beating for nine. 
nine hours. Not yet, but soon. And the brain, perfect. And already in position. Then we are almost ready. Almost. Shall we put the heart in now? Yes. Ludwig. Normally now. Bring it over. The storm is rising. All right. The air is heavy with electricity. It's going to be a terrific storm. We shall be ready. Isn't it amazing, Henry, that lying here within this skull is an artificially developed human brain, each cell, each convolution ready, waiting for life to come. Look, the storm is coming up over the mountains. It will be here soon. The kites, are the kites ready? Yes. Then send them up as soon as the wind rises. Hurry, hurry. The kites, the kites, get them ready.
Bring it to cosmic diffuser. Remove the diffuser beds. The Bride of Frankenstein. Thank you. 